Hey guys, welcome to a new series which we are affectionately going to call Fitness Fridays. So, without further ado, let's fire four minutes on the clock and let's get cracking. So, today's topic is going to be power zones. What are power zones? Why do we use them? How do we train to them? So let's get started. Seven zones, active recovery, endurance, tempo, threshold, or sometimes called lactate threshold, VO2 max, anaerobic capacity, and seven, neuromuscular power. So what are these zones and what are they all about? All the zones are a percentage of your FTP, functional threshold power. If you don't know what that is, there's a link up here to another video. I'll talk all about FTP, how to test it, and what you can do once you've got that figure. Zone one, active recovery. 55% and under of your FTP. Active recovery is essentially just easy spinning. It keeps the legs moving, keeps the, keeps the blood flowing through the legs, um, keeps the muscles loose. Best used after a really hard session or as a cool down. Endurance, 56 to 75% FTP. Essentially, this is just a nice steady pace that you could, with training, hold all day long. Zone three, tempo, 76 to 95%. The more we ride at tempo, we get the best adaptation of muscle glycogen storage. A step up from endurance, Riding pretty sharp now, raising the heart rate, breathing's going to be getting a little bit heavier. You're not going to be able to do this all day long, although the more time you spend in zone 3, just like zone 2, the longer you'll be able to spend in zone 3 in future. Zone 4, threshold or lactate threshold, 95 to 105%. The more time we spend here, the stronger we become as a cyclist because we increase our lactate threshold. And the more lactate threshold you have, the more power you can put out and the longer you can put it out for. It's all to do with changes in the mitochondrial enzymes. Zone 5, VO2 max, 105 to 120%. VO2 max is all about carrying the most amount of oxygen in the blood around the body. Training at VO2 max increases blood plasma volume, it increases your VO2 to capacity and also increases your stroke volume. Your stroke volume is with every heartbeat how much volume of blood can you get pumped around the system. Zone 6, anaerobic capacity, 121 to 150%. You are all out here. By working at anaerobic threshold, what we're doing is we're increasing the body's ability to cope with lactate. So if you can increase your lactate threshold, you can go longer as the body is working hard. And when the body works to a certain level, instead of doing an aerobic conversion of, tr of producing fuel through normal blood and oxygen, anaerobically is when the cells start to, to get their own fuel. Sounds a bit complicated, probably not explaining it well, but hopefully you know what I mean. Zone seven, neuromuscular power. There isn't necessarily a percentage applied to this because it's all about using fast twitch muscles. That initial burst. Now you can be doing that in a small ring, so you're not producing a lot of power. You're using those muscles to fire super, super fast. As you can imagine, more time we spend in zone seven, we increase the fast twitch fibers in the muscles. We also increase the ATP storage in the muscles. So all of the different zones to a certain degree affect the body as a whole. So whether you want to increase your lactate threshold, whether you want to increase your slow twitch muscles or increase the amount of fast twitch muscle fibers you have or whether you want to affect the mitochondrial enzymes or increase the blood volume, the blood plasma volume. All training to a certain degree will affect all of them. However, if you want to be specific and target certain areas, then you've got to work to those zones and that's the benefit of working to the power as opposed to working. Heart rate always takes a little while to catch up and of course as you're going up and down with your power or your, or your output, your heart rate will be average out so it's it's some people will always work to heart rate personally if you want to improve the best way to improve is to work to power because then you can be very specific at the end of the day heart rate has so many different variables have you had enough sleep are you fueled are you stressed are you tired power a what is a what that's it simple so that's the power zones all explained and we're nearly stuck to the four minute schedule. Not bad for a first attempt. Next time, we're gonna be looking at the different types of exercise you can be doing to target each individual zone. If you've been following the winter training series, link up here, then you'll already have an idea of the type of workouts that you can do. If you've not, check that link out. A really good winter training series all about building up for the winter, targeting some specific races. But listen guys, that's it for today's video. If you've liked it, drop me a thumbs up. Hit that like button, tickle it, smash it, whatever. Just make sure you're using it. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I will see you again soon for a new video. Right on. Smile.